Hello! Welcome to this FYEP mini lesson on library services and resources. Today, I'm going to show you where to find the tools you need to be successful when doing research at SUNY Canton, both in your FYEP class and in other classes you'll take. The first step is to go to the library website. An easy way to do that is to start at the SUNY Canton homepage and use the quick links and scroll down to library. Once you're on the library webpage, if you scroll down a bit on the right hand side, there's some helpful information. Here is the library contact information. And below that are the building hours, the hours that the Southworth Library Learning Commons is open. Below that are links to the tutoring center and the help desk both which are located at the Southworth Library Learning Commons. On the main page here, there's some helpful buttons. The first is this live chat button. If you click on that, you will be brought to a chat box in which you can speak to a librarian immediately, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can ask questions about research or citations or just any library related question you have. Another helpful link is this one where it says how to videos. If you click on that, you'll be brought to a screen with all kinds of different videos to help you with your library research. Um, here's a link to how to use the catalog, how to locate articles. There's also links on how to connect to tutoring online. Another really helpful resource we have is this textbook reserves. This is a program in which the library has um, the majority of textbooks on campus available for use. If you click on this and then click on the Sea Fall 2020 textbook list, you'll be brought to the list of all the textbooks that are used for this fall on campus and whether the library has it or not. If it says yes, that means that we have a print copy in the library that you can use for two hours at a time inside the library. If it says ebook, you actually don't need to come to the library at all. If you click on this link, you'll be brought to the ebook that you can use from wherever you are with your computer. If it says free OER, this means that it's actually a free link that your instructor has to your textbook. You will not need to buy that textbook. And then if it says no, that means we don't have that textbook. There's a couple other buttons I wanna show you before I show you how to do research. Um, the first is this OverDrive eBooks. This is actually a really fun link. If you click on it, you're brought to a collection of ebooks and audiobooks that are free for you to use with your SUNY Kennington credentials. Um, I often will download an audiobook to listen to in my car or when I'm out gardening. Um, in this collection, we also have foreign language learning. These are actually free audiobooks on you know, various languages. So for example, when I was learning Italian a few years ago, I would actually download these free audiobooks to help practice my Italian. The other button I want to show you here is this interlibrary loan button. So interlibrary loan is a free service in which you can actually request titles to articles or books that the, that the library doesn't own. So for example, if you find a journal article that we don't have um, on Google Scholar or some other search engine, um, you can actually put in a request through interlibrary loan and that article will be emailed to you um, for free. Usually it takes a few hours, um, sometimes a little longer, but I always suggest to people just because the library doesn't have that article doesn't mean that you can't get that article. I would always try suggesting interlibrary loan. All right, now on to some research. So depending on what kind of resources you'd like when you're doing your research, depends on where you go. 
If you're looking for books or ebooks, I generally suggest using ReSearch. ReSearch searches everything we have. Um, it can be a little bit tricky when trying to find journal articles, but for use, finding ebooks and, and print books, I definitely suggest ReSearch to use. So, for example, if I'd like to find a, a book on video games, I would type in video games and click search. Here you can see uh, it's come up with over a million results. And so this is why it can be kind of tricky when you're looking at journal articles to find what you want. But over on this left hand side, I can actually um, tweak my results. I can change what I'm looking at so I only see the things that I would like to see. So in this case, I might say I'd really like only books. And maybe I'd like really to have new books. I, I maybe only want stuff from 2010. So now I'm seeing a lot less um, results. And maybe I just want to see only, I could click on available online, meaning I only want ebooks since I'm at home and I, I only want to be able to see ebooks. I don't want to have to come to the library. So in that case, Here's a bunch of ebooks, and if I find one I like, I can actually click on this where it says available online, and it will bring me to where the link is to get into the ebook collection. So here I'll just click on that, and now I'm at the book. I do need to click on PDF full text over here on the left to be able to see the entire book. And here the book loads up and I can read through the book. Might want to make the page is a little smaller. Um, I can read through the book. I can also uh, save pages of it. I can print pages of it. Um, I can download it to my Google Drive. So there's a lot of options I have when using the ebook. So if I don't want an ebook or a print book and I want a journal article instead, I'm going to use this, this research databases. So our research databases are full of something called peer review journal articles or academic journals. Um, these are going to be something uh, many to most of your professors are going to ask you to have for your research at SUNY Canton. Um, if you've never heard of a peer reviewed article, it sounds a little scarier than it is. Basically, all it really means is that when the author, for example, if I were to write an article, submit to an academic journal, there will be a panel of experts that review it, people who are my peers. In my case, somebody who um, is a library expert would review the paper and maybe send it back for corrections. And we'd have a conversation back and forth to improve that paper and make sure it's the best it could be. And so these peer-reviewed journal articles tend to be a very high quality article because of that review process. Um, instead of something like a newspaper article where you may have an editor look it over. This, this has a lot more review, meaning the quality is, is very high. So to get to these, I would click on the research databases. And then I'm brought to this A to Z database list. So here is all the databases we have, which is, you know, a lot, and they're listed in A to Z. So if you know the exact database you want, this is an easy way to find that database. If you're kind of new to research or you're just not sure what, you're, what kind of database you're looking for, you may want to try the databases by subject instead. So that tab actually groups the, the databases by the subject they're in. So for example, if I'm trying to write a nursing paper, I could actually look under health nursing and all those nursing related databases are grouped together. So for your FYEP paper, I'm gonna actually suggest a couple different databases. The first is this one is called Opposing Viewpoints and Context. So here I'm gonna click on it and it will open a new link, and it's going to look like this. A lot of the databases will look similar where there's, there's a search bar near the top in which you can put a search term. 
Um, I could certainly do that here. It would be easy, but I actually want to show you something else, which I think is really valuable for your FYEP work. And it's this button here, Browse Issues. If I click on it, I'm actually brought to a page with hundreds of topics. These are all interesting current topics that you could be writing a paper on. So for example, if I'm interested in food related stuff, like maybe food waste, I could click on this link and I'll be brought to a page where they've grouped everything about food waste together. So on the top, I've got an encyclopedia article here, which your professors will take differently than Wikipedia. You can actually quote this encyclopedia article um, and it's considered a, a good source. A lot of professors will not take Wikipedia because they can, Wikipedia can be edited by anybody. Then below, you'll see they've grouped the information in different, in different um, topic headings. So, you know, if you want to listen to some audio stuff, websites, videos, but really I want to point out this one, this academic journals, you can see it right here. Um, these are 21 articles on food waste that come from academic journals. So these are going to be those high quality peer reviewed journal articles on food waste. And that's what I really like about this database is I could search all those issues. I could find something that interests me. And now I've got a whole bunch of articles all relating to that topic. And then if I find one I like, I can click on it. And now I can scroll through and read the, the article. You will notice at the top, and this is in, in these databases, there's something called an abstract. So right here, you've got abstract. Abstract is just a paragraph about what the article is going to be about. Some of these articles are 20, 30 pages long, and it's really hard to perhaps find the article you want if you're trying to read 20, 30 pages for each one. The abstract lets you read the brief paragraph and say, yes, this is something I really want to keep reading about, or you know what, this isn't exactly what I was looking for. I don't, I don't think I'm going to want this. So I always suggest people read through the abstract before you get into the actual article. Up here, there's some helpful tools. There's a site button. So if I click on site, I actually will have the, the citation for this article. So I can actually copy and paste this right into my, um, my references for my paper. I could also download the article or print it or email it to myself. And I always suggest that people, if you find an article you really like, find some way to save it, even if it's just emailing it to yourself. Because sometimes when we get searching, we might think we don't want something, but later we think we do. So if you find something that's kind of relevant, just send it to yourself. Okay, I'm going to close out of the opposing viewpoints and now I'm actually going to show you one other database. So I'm back here in the databases by subject. And again, under this general multi-topical, these are great when you're doing kind of a broad research project like you will do in FYEP. Um, here it says academic search complete. So this has got a wide variety of topics. And here, this one's EBSCOhost. This is a different um, search tool, but it looks very similar to that other one, the Gale one, where you have this search bar right here. So I can type in my search. And down below, oops, it actually just searched it for me. So here I've got 356 articles on video game addiction. Um, that's not an unreasonable number, but it might still be a little more than I'd like to look through. So over here, again, on the left-hand side, I can change what I'm looking to say. I only want to see full text, meaning I want to be able to see the whole thing, not just an abstract. Uh, and I want it to be scholarly peer-reviewed. And actually, I'd like it to be a really new article. Um, maybe I would like something from 2016 on. So now I've got 39 articles to look through to see if I can find something that would be helpful for the paper I'm writing. So if I find something that sounds good to me, 
I can click on the title and I'm brought to a screen like this. And again here, you've got that abstract, that paragraph about what the article is going to be about. And then there's a little more information, you know, authors and some subject terms. If I want to see the whole article, I can click over here where it says PDF full text. And here, I can look through the entire article. I've got the whole article here. You can see it's 19 pages. Um, there's some tools over here on the right hand side that are very helpful. Um, the one is the print. Another is this email it to yourself button. But again here, this little paper one is the site button. And again, I find this incredibly valuable. It saves a ton of time from trying to write out your citations on your own. I always have people, you know, I always suggest to just double check them, but I have in general found them to be incredibly accurate in the databases. So again, I could just copy and paste this into my references. So if I want to go back up here, it says results list. And now I can go back and look for other articles as well. So this was a basic up, um, review of how to do research at the SUNY Canton Library. Um, again, I would suggest going into the databases and, and checking them out. There's all kinds of databases here, and especially depending on what your program is, there's going to be ones that are more valuable to you and ones that are less valuable to you. So if you have any questions, please use the chat and ask them. And it has been great uh, reviewing this stuff with you. Have a great day.